Hello, crafty friends. I thank you so much for being here with me this Saturday. I am looking forward to sharing the Dazzling Dahlia collection. We are going to work on a technique of making a fluted petal on our Dazzling Dahlia. So I'm very excited to share that with you. So you may not know this, but on Fridays, Heartfelt Creation offers a Floral Friday, which is a discount on a particular collection. So right now you can pick up a discounted Dazzling Dahlia and you can head over to the website and do that if you don't already have this collection. So that includes all the pieces as well as the Creative Essentials bundle. So I hope that uh, you will check that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you the card that we're going to be making today. Let's see, I, my lights are kind of glaring on it. Okay, I think, you see how these petals are nice and fluted? That's what we're gonna work on today. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my camera view and we'll get started. Okay, there's a little bit better view. So this card is actually, because this is such a large uh, focal flower, I made this ca card or this flower into a belly band on my card. So we will do that towards the end, but we're gonna start off by making our beautiful dazzling dahlia. So the dazzling dahlia comes in a stamp set with a large dahlia and a small dahlia and two leaves, a large leaf and a small leaf. Now I wanted to show you this on purpose because I wanted to show you how I store mine. These are kind of a, a special little secret on the website. I think a lot of people don't know about them, but they fit into the storage binders and they have magnetic backs so you can put the dies right with the stamps and that's how I store my stamps and dies. So I wanted to share that with you real quick because that's where I keep my dahlia. So today we're just going to be using the small dahlia, the small leaf, and one large leaf. So what I want you to start off doing is I want you to stamp the small dahlia five times in the vivid chartreuse. And then our leaves, we're gonna do two small and one large in the emerald green. Once you have that done, and like I said, you're going to go ahead and stamp it five times. I've done mine earlier, but I'm going to only show you how to color the one. Because we're going to color all five of our uh, small dahlia flowers here the exact same way. So I'm only going to do it one time, and then you can go on through and do it to your other five. But we're going to start off with the sunflower ink. And we're going to do a very fast and easy coloring technique on these but also maybe a little bit different than you're used to. But I want you to make kind of a, a large yellow circle on your all of your dahlias. Then we're going to come in with this vibrant fuchsia. And we're gonna do a technique that maybe you haven't done before. We're gonna come in with our vibrant fuchsia and we're gonna go right over the top of that yellow, pulling it just a little bit further. You see that? I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it. Okay. And lastly, we're gonna come in with our T rows and we're gonna do just the centers of the petals. So this is where I like to use the point on the daubers. When I set it down, I can just very easily get just the centers by using that point. And I'm just making a circular motion on the centers of all of my petals. All right. So that was fast. And you can very quickly do that to all five. While I go on, we're going to take your vivid chartreuse and we stamp these in the emerald green. And now we're going to take our vivid chartreuse and we're going to start at the base of the leaf and just make a circular motion pulling up that vein. But I'm purposely leaving the edges white and I'm gonna do all three, the big and the two small, the exact same way. All right, just like that. I 
I don't know how familiar you are with real dahlias, but they come in so many different colors. It really uh, gives you lots of versatility with this flower on uh, coloring techniques because really any color of the rainbow dahlias come in and they're just a beautiful flower. All right, so once we get those die cut in, or die cut, we're going to take our uh, colored one and we're gonna come back with this tea rose and we're gonna color the tips. Not real heavy, just a little bit out there on the tips. That just uh, helps us uh, have dimension on our flower. It's a simple little thing, but it, it's gonna create some dimension out there. We're also going to turn it over and we're gonna bring in, whoops, bring in our vibrant fuchsia again. And we're quickly gonna make a circle now I know that doesn't look very good on there, but that's okay because it's still going to give us a little bit of color on the back side. And then we're going to go in with our tea rose and just do the petals just very lightly, putting some of that uh, pale orange. Oops, my my dauber is uh, coming off. I use my daubers till they about fall apart. So <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we're, when you get that done. Our, our flower will be ready for the next step. All right, now I've taken one of these. Whoops, 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 the first we gotta have to do this. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is run them through the, the mold using a die cut machine. And we're going to put all of them in face side up. Now I do three at a time, so and I spritz it between each layer. Okay, and then I would put another one on and then spritz it again. All right, and our leaves, we would go ahead and lay our leaves in here as well. And the leaves we're gonna put face down. So the flowers are face up, but our leaves are face down. Okay, then you're gonna put your lid on and go ahead and run that through your machine. Now when it comes out of the mold, it's gonna look like this. Okay. And I wanted to show you this one and hopefully you can see, I've put little black lines right here on each petal and that's because we're going to take a pair of scissors and on all of our molded flowers, we're gonna gently snip just right in to our petal. Okay, we wanna leave a gap that is not cut because we don't wanna cut our petals off, but we do wanna be able to shape them tighter than what the petal allows us. So by making this little snip, it's gonna allow us to get that really uh, fluted shape that we want, okay? So I like to go ahead and do all of one direction at the same time. And oh, if I was any good with measurements, I'd be able to tell you, I mean, I don't even think it's a millimeter. It's, it's really just a teeny tiny little snip. I'll, I'll try to get my, hopefully you can kind of see. You kind of see where my scissors are in there. And you're gonna do that on both sides. So we're gonna go all the way around this direction and then turn it around and come this direction. Now, if you on accident um, cut yours too far and cut your petal off, that is okay. You'll be able to shape that and glue it in at the end. So don't throw it away. But we're gonna endeavor to try not to, to cut them off. I think I missed this one right here. Okay, so now that we have our shaped and colored dahlia, we're gonna take the largest golf tool. Now, do it, does anyone have, any, have, have used the golf tool set? It comes with four different sizes in there and we're gonna be using the largest one today. But I love these golf tools. I use them for all kinds of things. So to get that fluted shape, the first thing we're gonna do for each petal, kinda of using the rounded part here of your golf tool, you're gonna to press down and kinda of rub that petal so you get this well-rounded shape. Now it's not fluted yet, but that's okay. Right now we're just getting the rounded shape. And you're gonna do that just like this. And I like to do all five petals. There you go. See how that's shaping? So when you're done, it should look like this. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn that over so you can kind of see what it looks like from the back. 
So already these little places where we snipped are giving us more shape. But now we're going to take it up a notch. By using the point of our golf tool, we're going to press right past where we snipped. Okay, so I'll do this several times, but watch carefully. You're going to press down, and when you do, you see these sides coming together? We're going to push those on together and kind of press down. See that? I'm going to set it down so you can see it better so my fingers aren't in the way. Now, while you have it like this, you see how the two edges of the pedal are overlapping? I want you to put your fingernail right down there at the base and press. Then you're going to take your other finger and lift up. By doing that, you're creating a crease right here. And that crease is going to help hold your flute shape in your pedal. Okay, so let, let's do that to all of them. Do that down. Lay it down. Put your finger at the base. I hope you're able to see well enough. And then we're going to press up. Now, the first time you try this, you may feel like, oh, this is too tough. I can't do it. But keep at it because it really isn't that difficult. It just takes a little bit of practice. The first time I did it, I, I was having trouble too, but I, I just kept at it, and it did get easier. And we're going to do this same technique to all five of our layers. Got them overlapped. Put your finger down. And I'm putting my finger about right here. See, not right at the where it meets the thing, because I don't want to tear it off. I'm putting it about right there. There we go. All right, so once you have this shape, can you see that well? Kind of. See how we've got this nice fluted uh, pedal now? Turn it over. Whoops, dropped it. There we go. Now I use this little foam piece to uh, poke holes using my uh, golf tool. So try to find the center and you're just going to pop that down and pop a hole. And because this is so thick, we want our hole to be pretty big because we're going to put quite a few stamens in there at the end. So I'm just going to press this down so that that hole is yay big. <laughs> Okay, all right. So I have gone ahead and done that. You're gonna do this technique to all five of your layers, okay? So I'm, once you get that done, take two of them and you're gonna take your dry clear glue and on one of them, put some dry clear glue uh, whoop, around the hole. Then you're gonna take the next layer Put it in and offset those petals. And then we're just going to press that down. Now do remember to offset your petals because this is what's going to make the layers of our dahlia. Okay? So you're going to do this technique twice. So you'll have something that looks like this. Now one of them is going to be your very base layer. So see how it's a little flatter? We're going to get out our deluxe flower shaping kit and take out our mat and our stylus. And our very bottom layer, we're going to leave it alone because we want it to lay a little flatter. But for this one, which I'm just going to make sure those holes are, yeah, they're good. You're going to take your, your stylus and just run them around the inside there so that that pops up a little bit, because that needs to set inside this layer. Okay. Now we're not going to put this away yet, because we're going to use it again in just a moment. So we're going to take our bottom layer and add some glue again. And go ahead and to the best of your ability, offset those petals again, but uh, some of them are going to overlap and that's okay. Go ahead and you can take your uh, golf tool and kind of press in there to make sure that we're keeping that hole kind of aligned. Okay. All right, isn't that cool? 
I love that. Now without snipping those petals, I could not for the life of me get that shape in my petals. So it wasn't until I decided to snip them that I started uh, getting the result that I wanted with the fluted petals. So now we're gonna take our fifth one and we're gonna go ahead and poke our hole in here. Now, if you have a heat gun, this is the time where you want to go ahead and turn it on and get it heating up. Because to add our stamens, we're going to want our uh, glue gun. All right, let me get mine ready. Okay, so you're going to do that one last time, your, your last one. And we're going to do the same technique, except this time we really want to get some lift. We're going to press in there. Go around in circles, going all the way out at the edge of the petals. See how I got that to lift up much tighter than I did the one before. Because okay. this one's going to be our one that really sits inside. Now before we go any further, I wanted to show you one other thing. If you had one of these, and let's say you didn't want to use stamens, and instead you wanted to put like a bud inside, at this point you can take one and sh put it through your mold the other direction instead of uh, face up put it face down and it's going to mold like this and then you can pull these up like this and and hot glue that together and then you can put this down inside to give yourself a very uh, pretty flower this way okay so that's kind of another option hopefully you can see around my fingers I'm kind of holding that but for today we're not going to do it that way but I, I wanted to show you real quick that that is an option but we're going to do it this way now I chose to use um, these stamens. These are the ones that were originally created for the calla lilies. They're kind of taller and have like um, a little bit of texture. And I thought that color would look good with my kind of pinks and, and yellows and greens in there. So, all right. And I think I'm gonna start with maybe six. Let's see how many I got there. Yeah, there's six there. And one thing I did is I laid them down on my paper and I went back with my Vibrant Fuchsia and I just tapped on them. I didn't want to color them completely. I still want that yellow look, but I also wanted a little bit of that red or pink in there. So I just tapped on them. Yeah. And you know, some of these are just uh, little extra steps that uh, I think are fun that I like to do, but if they don't suit you, you certainly don't have to do that. I just thought that was a uh, fun little extra. So sometimes I will take the, the wire and go around that, but because we made such a nice large hole, I think I'm gonna be able to just slide these right down in there without any problem. All right, so when I get it to about right here, that's when I'm gonna take my glue gun and add some hot glue in there. Pull that down. And kind of hold that and give your hot glue a chance to cool. So when you know, right here when I'm in a, a, a live, that's when my, my glue gun uh, needs another stick. <laughs> so. Luckily, I have one over here, so we'll pop that in there. All right. Now we can go ahead and thread that into the next. Hopefully that'll... I just realized I don't have my seeing eyeglasses on. That's why I'm having a little bit of trouble. All right, we're gonna feed that down in there. There we go. All right, and again, for this level, that's when you're gonna add some more hot glue. There we go. And pull that down into place. And look at that. Woohoo! I love that. All right, wasn't that easy? Now at this point is where you can go and you can um, 
add some glitter. Um, one way that I thought might be an easier way than daubing it on or like this is maybe putting some wet glue on your thing and kind of dragging it through and then dipping it in the dipping it in the uh, glitter or, or sprinkling it on like that. So I'm just so happy with the way that turned out. So now that we're, um, we've got our flower made, we are going to switch gears. We'll, we'll lay our beautiful dazzling dahlia aside with our pretty fluted petals. I hope, give me some thumbs up if you enjoyed making this flower, if you, if you are going to give it a try at home. And the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I made my belly band. Okay? It's not super difficult, but the way I did that is I cut two pieces, and when they're laid together, I want it to measure 16 inches. So from end to end, I want it to be 16 inches. So I went ahead and measured it 16 inches and drew a line here where I needed to glue them to overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and do that step. I'm just going to quickly glue that to overlap. And then I use two of the super strong magnets from the bottle caps. You can get these on the Heartfelt website. And there's a package of um, smaller ones. And those are the ones that I used. Now my package I'm showing you here is of the bigger ones because I, I had my magnets, but I, I didn't have the packaging. But I wanted to show you what it looks like. It looks exactly the same, except they're a package of, of several small ones. So you can find that on the website. If you put magnets in the search bar, that'll come right up for you. And I am going to use a little bit of score tape here. And I'm going to take one end and fold it over about a half inch. And I'm going to put some score tape there. And I'm going to put one of my magnets. Just want to make sure I had it lay in the right way. You don't want to accidentally tape your magnets in there with them opposite direction because then your belly band is not going to close. I can speak from experience on that. <laughs> so, okay. Put another piece of score tape right here and just fold that over and rub it down real well. And, uh, that's going to hold down right there. Okay. Now we won't add the second magnet until we uh, put it on our card. That's kind of the last thing. I'm gonna set this one right over here. Okay, for our card, we used the six by six shutter fold card white. All right, and that card looks like this. And to make all the pieces for this card, I used the same die set. I used this die set right here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you which pieces are which. I'm not going to actually glue the whole card together for you because I want to save enough time to show you some of the versatile flowers that you can also make using the Dazzling Dahlia. Whoops, <laughs> my magnet is sticking to my dies. Okay, for this bottom piece down here, I took the largest circle and I cut it out and then I, I cut it in half perfectly on my paper cutter, turned them around and put one on this side and one on this side. And that's how I got this base uh, pretty uh, peachy pink color. Then I used this piece to cut out my kind of fuchsia colored paper and I did that twice on both sides. And then I used the window pieces right here. There's actually three of them. When they come out, they come out in three different, whoops, three different pieces. And mine are acting like they've never been out of here, and they have. But they come out as three different pieces, so you have to line them up inside your white piece and, and die cut those out to make your window pieces. So, so that's how I did that. And then on the inside, this piece 
is just one of the six by six squares that come in the paper pad. And I do trim it down just a little bit so that I have, oh, less than an 18th of an inch around the edges. And that just makes sure that it opens and closes easily. Sometimes if you put the six inch and you get it on those uh, folds, then you have trouble folding it. Now for my Happy Mother's Day circle, You grab it here. I used an eyelet piece from this set and one of the circles and I just uh, saw which circle fit my Happy Mother's Day and that's the one I chose and I purposely I didn't want a circle big enough that stuck up way high because I kind of wanted my belly band to cover it up. So there you can see, whoops, you know, I you can see a little bit of the eyelet in there, but that, that's all. I, that, it's such a large flower and I didn't want anything to distract from my beautiful dahlia. So that's how I did that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use this same card to finish up our belly band. So I'm going to, we've already put the magnet on this side. So I'm going to lay my card in there and fold it to where I want it. And then I'm going to fold this side to where I want it. Then I'm just going to take the magnet and it's gonna automatically go where it needs to go. And once it falls into place, I'll use my bone folder kinda to score the edges. And then holding that in place, I, this tells me where to put my, my, whoops, hopefully that stays, yeah, we may have to do that again because I didn't have my score tape in my hand, but now that I have my score tape ready, we'll do that one more time, he's slipping all over, okay, one more time, go, and we'll pull that up, make sure I'm putting that score tape right where that belongs, ahead and put that there, then this down, there we go, that's going to be right in place, and now I'm going to fold this back, and you could cut it off if you wanted to, or you can just fold it back, whichever you want to do works fine, I'm just going to get another piece of score tape here, Now for the final, final touches, we're going to add our leaves and our flowers. Now to cut these off, it's nice if you have a wire cutter. I can usually split them apart a little bit and cut two or three at the same time and, and get that cut okay. So it really just depends on how strong your, your hand and your scissors are, but um, that's kind of a trick. So I just cut it off so there's still a little bit of stem showing and, and that's nice and covered by my hot glue. And when I glue this on here, I want to add my, my glue to the side with the magnet. There we go. And, oops, almost forgot our little leaves over here. And just, I'm going to put two leaves on one side and one leaf on the other side. All right. I love this glue pen and I usually have no troubles with it until I get live and that's when it always gives me grief. <laughs> that's just how it is, right? There we go. Just gonna hold him a second. I suppose I should call flowers hers. I don't know. I always say he. I don't know why. There we go. So are any of you crafting today? Uh, Saturday is always a day that I love to spend in my craft room if uh, my family allows it. <laughs> if I can get away with it, I'll spend all day in here. <laughs> but uh, often life calls and I do have to, to go out. But I, I love spending a Saturday in the craft room. So how about you? Are you going to be crafting today or uh, will you be uh, doing other things on this Saturday? 
I, I hope if you're spending the day crafting that you'll consider uh, making this card or, or at least making a, flute, a dahlia with the fluted petals. I, I'm just very happy with the way it turned out. All right, now, what, real quickly, before I move on, I'm not going to talk a lot about these cards. I'm just going to kind of um, move them past the camera there so that you can, and I want you just to notice all the different ways. All of these are made with the exact same, with the exact same stamps and dies. So this one's a very simple dahlia, and it's just two layers. Here's another one that's just two layers, but on this one, I pinched the petals at the tips and kind of curled them back more. And I, I lifted them up and gave a lot more dimension um, to those outer petals. So it's kind of a variation of this one, just a, a little bit different. Okay, then we have this one, which is one of my favorites. And remember that technique I showed you with the inner petal? It's just the same version as the other with a couple layers here or simples. And then I just made that bud in the middle. And this is all with the exact same stamps and dies. It's uh, really cool, I think. So here's one. And on this one, it has much more layers. Very similar to the one we made, but I didn't snip the petals on that one. So this one is very much like the one before, except on this one, every single petal on this inner one, I snipped three times into the petal and then crinkled it up. So that's kind of a fun, uh, fun little way to make it look different. And then on this one, I did that technique to all of the petals. And on the outer layer, on the outer layer, I curled it this way. And on the inner layer, I went the other direction so that you can see the design. And then the very final one is this one. And this was one of the very first ones I ever made. And, uh, I thought I would include him, but I do think I've gotten better at making them as I, I go on. I do like this one, but I, I like some of those others better. But it's just such a fun and versatile flower. And I, I am confident I can still get more looks out of it. I'm still playing with it to see what I can do. So that is part of the fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch my camera back. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed making our fluted petal dahlia. If you don't have this flower, do consider going over to the website and taking advantage of the Friday floral. That um, will be from the 6th to the 8th of May. That sale will be going on, so um, that uh, do take advantage of that if you don't already have this. And if you do have this flower, I hope that you'll uh, take the opportunity to make uh, a flower with fluted petals. I also want to encourage you to check out the Insider Membership that can get you an additional 20% saving on top of the Floral Friday savings. So that, that's no laughing matter. That, that's really good savings. And we know these stamps and dies are an investment and they offer quite a bit of savings on them if you're savvy and uh, get those, take advantage of those savings. So, all right, I hope you have a wonderful Saturday. I've enjoyed crafting with you today and uh, have a, a lovely afternoon. Thank you so much.